Hello. I've come to read another bit of a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. It's a piece from Higher Water. It's called Higher Water Sailing. I hope you might enjoy it. Give me of your bark or birch tree, of your yellow bark or birch tree, growing by the rushing river, tall and stately in the valley. I, a light canoe, will build me, build a swift chiamong for sailing, that shall float upon the river, like a yellow leaf in autumn, like a yellow water lily. Lay aside your cloak or birch tree, lay aside your white skin wrapper, for the summer time is coming, and the sun is warm in heaven, and you need no white skin wrapper. Thus a loud cried higher water, in the solitary forest, by the rushing Taquamenya, when the birds were singing gaily, in the moon of leaves were singing. And the sun, from sleep awakening, started up and said, Behold me, Gizis, the great sun, behold me. And the tree with all its branches rustled in the breeze of morning, saying with a sigh of patience, Take my cloak, O higher water. With his knife the tree he girdled, just beneath its lowest branches, just above the roots he cut it, till the sap came oozing outward, down the trunk from top to bottom, she he cleft the bark asunder, with a wooden wedge he raised it, stripped it from the trunk unbroken. Give me of your boughs, O cedar, of your strong and pliant branches, my canoe to make more steady, Make some strong and firm beneath me. Through the summit of the cedar went a sound, a cry of horror, went a murmur of resistance, but it whispered, bending downward, Take my boughs, O higher water. Down he hewed the boughs of cedar, shaped them straightway to a framework. Like two boughs he formed and shaped them, like two bended boughs together. Give me of your roots, O tamarack, of your fibrous roots, O large tree, my canoe to bind together, so to bind the ends together, that the water may not enter, that the river may not wet me. And the larch with all its fibers, shivering in the air of morning, touches far with its tassels, said with one long sigh of sorrow, Take them all, O higher water. From the earth he tore the fibres, tore the tough roots of the larch tree, closely sewed the bark together, bound it closely to the framework. Give me of your balm, O fir tree, of your balsam and your resin, so to close the seams together, that the water may not enter, that the river may not wet me. And the fir tree, tall and sombre, sobbed through all its robes of darkness, rattled like a shore with pebbles, answered wailing, answered weeping, Take my balm, O higher water. And he took the tears of balsam, took the resin of the fir tree, smeared there with each stem and fissure, made each crevice safe from water. Give me of your quills, O hedgehog, all your quills, O catch the hedgehog. I will make a necklace of them, make a girdle for my beauty, and two stars to deck her bosom. From a hollow tree the hedgehog, with his sleepy eyes, looked at him shot his shining quills like arrows, saying with a drowsy murmur, through the tangle of his whiskers, take my quills, O higher water. From the ground the quills he gathered, 
all the little shining arrows, stained them red and blue and yellow with the juice of roots and berries. Into his canoe he wrought them, round his waist a shining girdle, round his bows a gleaming necklace, on his breast two stars resplendent. Thus the birch canoe was builded in the valley by the river, in the bosom of the forest, and the forest life was in it, all its mystery and its magic, all the lightness of the birch tree, all the toughness of the cedar, all the largest subtle sinews, and it floated on the river like a yellow leaf in autumn, like a yellow water lily. Paddles none had higher water, paddles none he had or needed, for his thoughts as paddles served him, and his wishes served to guide him. Swift or slow at will he glided, fear to right or left at pleasure. Then he called aloud Quasind, to his friend the strong man Quasind, saying, Help me clear this river of its sunken logs and sandbars. Straight into the river Quasin plunged as if he were an otter, dived as if he were a beaver, stood up to his waist in water, to his armpits in the river, swam and shouted in the river, tugged at sunken logs and branches, with his hands he scooped the sandbars, with his feet the ooze and tangle. And thus sailed my higher water down the rushing Tukwamina, Sail through all its bends and windings, sail through all its deeps and shallows, while his friend the strong man Quasind swam the deeps the shallows waded. Up and down the river went they, in and out among its islands, cleared its bed of root and sandbar, dragged the dead trees from its channel, met its passage safe and certain, met a pathway for the people, from its spring among the mountains, to the waters of Pawating, to the bay of Taquamanu. Oh, that's the end of that uh, part of the poem. Thank you for listening.